agentpreneurs, and welcome to episode 37 of the Daily List Report. This is day two of Stand and Salute Extreme Ownership. I hope you watched yesterday. If you didn't, it's actually available to you on our YouTube channel. So go to YouTube, check it out. We've got, we had a great episode yesterday with David Deary, with Lieutenant Colonel John Boyer, really introducing some of the ideas of extreme ownership. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have a co-host this week, as I think you all know. So I'm bringing her on right now. I've got Wasal Cotter, my co-host of the week. Say hello, Wasal. Hello again, co-host Randy. It's nice to hear from everyone, all of our agentpreneurs. Hello again. Day two of five amazing days this week. I cannot wait for today's guest. I am just so excited about our guest today because for all of our agentpreneurs out there, you know, we've been talking generally about connecting the dots between military leadership and their resilience and the way that they get inspired and lead teams um, and how we as civilians can draw from that incredible experience um, and bring that into our own personal lives and businesses right now as real estate agents, lenders, and of course us in the technology world that supports all of you. Um, We couldn't think of any better guests to bring on uh, to actually really hit this message home with everyone than Mary Maloney, who is a top producing real estate agent, mom, business owner, wife, Navy veteran extraordinaire in North County, San Diego, and whose team is actually one of the top producing teams in the country. Hometown Realty by Mary Maloney is ranked number one team by Real Trends in the Wall Street Journal and sales volume in coastal North County, San Diego, which as many of you across the country know is a one of the most enticing real estate markets, but also one of the most challenging. Um, this this woman is incredible. And you know she's one of those people that I found out about when I first moved to San Diego, like like six or seven years ago, Randy, because this woman gets stuff done. She's the person who would drive an Airstream bus up to an open house and basically bring the whole community out to take a look at a property and just make things fun, right? And and that type of of energy does not just come from anywhere. It's coming from a leader um, and emanating from this powerful female leader that I personally love and respect, Mary Maloney, who we're bringing on today. And I felt like our agentpreneurs out there would love to hear some live lessons from her, tips and tricks on what she's doing right now with her brokerage um, to get us through these it's times of how stuff. forward thinking they are, right? Absolutely. And you know, we love that, you know, technology, innovation. Um, we love supporting agents who see the future the way that we do, right? Because then that way we can help our consumers a lot faster. So I'm very excited to bring her on today. So Saul, you already did a great job of introducing Mary. So what do you think? Should we just bring Mary on right now? I think we have to bring Mary on and let her talk about her because it's a pretty cool story. But it's let's a bring pretty her on. cool story. Mary, you are on air with our agentpreneurs. Why don't you say hello to everybody today? Oh, Mary's Mary, on off mute. mute. Come off mute, Mary. It's okay. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> no worries. I've done it a thousand times. Trust me. <laughs> I was in communications in the military and intelligence, and here I can't take the mute button off. <laughs> It's okay. I've got a business partner who hasn't figured it out in five years, so we're good. (laughs) Mary, welcome to the show. We are so delighted to have you and your wonderful energy on here. All of our agentpreneurs are going to be very happy that they came to watch you today because I know you have a lot of valuable uh, information to share with everyone today from all kinds of angles. So we're going to try and condense this ring. Andy, your job is to wrangle us too, okay? Because I we have know a lot you to guys can just talk forever. That is the truth. And I've I, seen I it. already am foreshadowing that we're going to have to have Mary back again because I know that we have a lot of fun stuff to cover. Um, are, Mary, so. would you please start by just giving us a little bit of background about who you are, what you do? So right out of high school, I actually joined the military uh, while I was still a senior in high school uh, to the surprise of everyone in our small town. But I spent eight (laughs) years uh, in the military, in the US Navy, um, did three tours, served in Desert Storm, uh, and then was stationed at Top Gun uh, before I transitioned out of the military. That's how I met my husband who was a uh, SEAL Team Class 123 and then became a Navy hard hat diver. Uh, so we are a military family. And uh, as I transitioned out and became a military spouse, uh, so I've served in both roles, um, then I uh, went into, into marketing and worked in corporate America and was so blessed to work with some of the biggest brands in the country, uh, Kellogg's, Nickelodeon, Uh, Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield. And that's really where I developed my marketing chops, if you will. And so the transition into real estate happened 16 years ago uh, from a friend, believe it or not. 
And uh, it has been a wonderful journey, a journey in itself, because no one sets you up to run a company until you run a company. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> So uh, I'm just I'm, I'm just blessed. I've gone from being a single agent to uh, being the lead agent of a wholly owned subsidiary uh, known as Santa Leo Hills Realty. And then in 2008, uh, was having breakfast with the president of that company who said, you know, we're hearing a lot of squawk on the streets about Lehman Brothers and AIG. Mm. And uh, uh, we're not happy about the profit potential. And I said, so sell it to me. And he said, I just told you it's not going to make money. And I said, so I should get it really cheap then. <laughs> That's amazing. And, uh, so acquired the company and that was um, 12 years ago. So uh, it has been quite a ride in real estate. That's fantastic. Um, Mary, you know, as you know, we've got this amazing theme this week around extreme ownership. And we've got, you know, Jocko himself coming on on Friday to talk to us and sort of end our week. And so where I want to start here today is, Mary, what does extreme ownership mean to you? So I, I think anyone that's been in the military and especially anyone that's read Jocko's book can relate to ego and pride um, that that can control you. It can control your decisions. It can control your actions and the willingness to give up the ego and pride to make those tough decisions you know, that's really what extreme ownership is to me, the willingness to own the problems and the mistakes and not trying to point fingers at other people, whether that's in the foxhole, in the combat information center, or if you're a SEAL team and, and you're taking, you know, Ramadi with guns downfield, you have to be willing to take ownership of the things that are happening in your business, in your life, professionally, personally. Because when you when you are willing to take that ownership, that's how you build trust. And that's how you build trust with not only the consumer, your clients, your team members, but also the, then those people that are that are in your life and surround you. So extreme ownership just means taking ownership of every single action in your life. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to me. Absolutely. Well, Saul, why don't you jump in here? I know we want to talk a little bit about maybe some examples or stories that Mary has. Yeah, you know, I we talked about this the other day, Randy. Every time people read Jocko's book, they have a different reaction to what yes. that definition means to you. I love that that's where you went with it, Mary, because uh, I think pointing the fingers at others, the, the blame game has been rampant in the industry over the last two and a half months. And I don't think it's a, it's a negative uh, in terms of, I don't think people mean it. I think when there's an absence of information and there's no known outcome here with this coronavirus, it's a, it's yeah. a worldwide uh, pandemic, right? It's, it causes the, the inability to justify in your mind how you're acting. So you end up pointing the finger since you have nowhere else to put that information. Limited information causes fear, um, causes insecurity. I love the advice that you gave there about just taking ownership over it. I, um, I think you do that in a lot of different areas of your business as uh, a mom, as a leader, as um, just a total badass in general. And you're, the examples of that have played out in all of the county and in your brokerage. I mean, you have results to show, which I think is the, the ultimate story here, right? We want people to understand how they can leverage the notions in Extreme Ownership, the book, in their personal life for results. So I think it would be great if you could talk to us a little bit about maybe an example of Extreme Ownership, because you have so many. If you could share one with us of something that comes to mind where maybe we could share with the agent listeners uh, an example in your career or life of extreme ownership. So I, I, I think as women, um, we just use this as being a multitasker, right? Uh, but that really comes down to being a problem solver as a wife, as a mom, as a business owner. We mm -hmm. have struggled so many things that you know, women truly do take extreme ownership of the things that are happening in their family um, and, and and just take those and run with it. And you know what? We make shit happen, right? That's who we do, are, right? And so, um, you know, that then when, when so many lady leaders that I see in the real estate industry, because let's face it, the numbers don't lie. The average realtor is a 55 year old woman. Yet yep. only six percent of C-suite offices in major brokerages are held by women. Why is that? Because sometimes I think 
we as women can't you know, translate those great skills that we have in our personal life into our professional lives, lives because it's, it's so much you know, male dominated, good old boys club, that sort of thing, access to capital, um, other things that just kind of keep us, keep us kind of stepping back and not really willing to step into the risk, right? Because we want to play it safe. But as we know, if you're a startup company, most investors won't even talk to you until you've had three failed startups because the lessons in the failure and the lessons in the risk are what can move us. And my example of that is my entire team imploding uh, back in at the end of 2005, moving into 2016. You know, we were on this amazing skyrocketing journey and we grew too fast. We weren't focused on getting ahead of, um, so sorry. What is going on here? Don't worry Probably about a it. Probably a client call. The charm of a live show. A deal you got to deal with. <laughs> life, right? Um, but you know, we weren't really focused on guns down the field. And we took our eye off of what was going on in our own brokerage at the time. And so we grew too fast, we weren't facing the problems, and we imploded. And that was really hard for me because it was truly the first time that I was facing an extreme failure in my life. Um, we all go through hardships, but I was so addicted to the opinion of others in my industry, the opinion of others you know, in the real estate space, I was just named to the Inman 101 most influential list. And then I implode like that was weighing so heavy on me. And, and I had to step up into letting go of the opinion of others. I had to step up into owning the problems and the mistakes that we buried our head in the sand around hmm. and own that if, if I'd have only stepped up and led instead of being behind and pushing, it probably wouldn't have happened. And then analyzing how could I grow from that to be able to adapt and adopt moving forward. You know, that's said. amazing. Yeah, go ahead, Randy, Michelle. Yeah, Mary said something to you and I the other day, I think that's really relevant here. You said something and we actually wrote it down because it's like the we total did. quote I wanna use. You said, Failure is a moment in time, not a tattoo. Is that what you said? I think that's what you said the other day. I, I, I've kind of taken on this thing that that failure is just a bruise. It's not a tattoo. Yeah, and you know what we think, especially in the technology world, and you know our company's only five years old, Mary, and we've gotten to this large number of agents that work with us, and we have a mm -hmm. massive responsibility to them. Our responsibility is to fail a ton so that when we offer a correct solution, it is the best one, right? Um, you don't get there without failure. I think people, you know, they don't realize that necessarily. So I'll say one other thing about this notion of your female leadership in this process and all the comments you made about how difficult it is for that 55 year old female agent to just break in and make their own way in this industry. I don't think there's any time ever in history before like the present to do that, first of all. And I know we'll talk a little bit more about your perspective on the future of technology and how that relates to what we're doing today. But beyond that, not only did you tell everyone that they should take ownership over and not, not put the blame on everyone else or on other unknown circumstances and instead just go inside with that and rely on your own experience to push forward and take extreme ownership. But separately, one of the things I think females don't do very often is uh, also take credit, right, for the, the positive wins that they put out there and the leadership that they do, the influence that they do give. Many of the activities that you and your team exude are the exact examples that Jocko puts in the book as when you dive into the fire and take extreme ownership, what happens around you is far greater than what actually happens to you. It's right. the influence of the trail you leave behind, the example that you left behind. And as you can see, when you Google your name, all of the trail of influence you left behind you in your communities with the families that you serve, the agents that you work with, has come from this energy emanating from you where you guys also do a great job of taking credit for the work that's done. And you have to, because it's a disservice to your own employees and to your own customers if you do not. Um, and so we also have to be unapologetic and take extreme ownership over the wins that we're responsible for as female leaders. And I think you've done a great job of that, Mary. Well, it, it's hard because, you know, as women, it, it's hard for us to take compliments a lot of times. And we don't mm -hmm. come across as braggadocious 
Um, but I think if we continue to put the focus on service, so service, education, and advocacy, if we continue to put that focus there, that is how you can translate being successful and having great wins into the amount of families that you are serving. And so, you know, real estate's full of ego. Like, let's let's just talk brass tacks, right? <laughs> no. In real estate, right? What are you talking about, Mary? I have no <laughs> idea what you're referring How to. How many transactions did I do last month or, or what? <laughs> um, but, you know, that ego can sometimes cloud judgment when it comes to it. You know, you can't pass the burden down. Right. When you pass the burden down, that's when problems and issues start to happen. So we have to have this this mentality as leaders, true leaders, whether you know, you're leading a brokerage, you're leading a small team or or you're leading your family. You have to lead uh, and you have to lead from the front, uh, not push from behind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Mary, you know, we've got we love to give our agents some real tangible takeaways, right? I know you've thought about this and we've got three things and a couple stories that I think go along nicely. So, you know, why don't you talk about for our agents listening right now? Like what what can they do right now? What is some actionable advice? I know you've got some tips for them. So, you know, one of the things that has served me well comes from, um, you know, my time in the military because uh, you know, when, when you're in the combat information center, you're not operating in the past. You're anticipating what is going to happen and then you are strategizing on how to get there first, right? right. We want to have our plan executed, not reactive, right? And so in business, if you really take that tactical mentality, you always want to be in front of the market. You need to be head up. You need to be listening to national webinars. I can't even tell you how many webinars I've been on in the last 60 huh. days. I hardly mm -hmm. even make up anymore. Like, <laughs> just get over it. This is what you look like. <laughs> the information is so fast and furious, but we have to be ahead of the market. Uh, just a quick example, I did my first short sale in 2006. By the time 2008 rolled around, you know, everybody's trying to jump on the bandwagon and we're doing 50, 60 a year by now, right? So I think right now, people have got to be getting in front of where is the market going? Where is post COVID? If you're head down and at home binge watching movies like Outbreak, <laughs> license goodbye. Like you're not gonna survive in this market. Yes. You have oh, no. to be Sharpening, iron sharpens iron, iron, which is number two. You have got to be head up, seeing what's happening, and then deciding, how am I going to pivot my business? How am I going to adapt, adopt, and shift my business like a frigate? You want to be small. You want to be agile. If you're trying to move an aircraft carrier, that's a slow roll to the left, right? So you've got to be sharpening the iron, proximity to others in the industry that are doing the business that you wanna do, but eyes wide open, macro to micro market, what is your top of funnel and what happens in your market to know how do I get in front of it? Where is the market gonna move post COVID, right? We're already seeing buyer trends change what buyers want in, in, in their home, yeah. which leads me into, you know, sellers. We are going to move, in my opinion, this is my unobstructed view. I believe we're gonna move from a desire market to a needs-based market. And what I mean by that is sellers, if you're a big listing agent, you have got to meet sellers where they are. COVID is going to change where sellers are. We're all in the same storm, but we're not all on the same boat, right? We're not in the same boat. We all have different situations happening. And so agents have got to be communicating, messaging, making sure that their marketing is correct and messaging to consumers in a way that resonates with them right now, which you gotta put the ego aside. 
this is not about us. It's not about who's number one in the market. It's not about how many houses you sold. It is about how can you serve the consumer right now? Are they bleeding? Are they in a situation where possibly they're talking about divorce? Do they have to relocate? In uncertain times, we have to be the guide when it comes to real estate and serving those consumers so we can so that we can bring them home basically and uh yeah. you know those are really my three tactical tips when it comes That's to great pre to post covid how are we going to get through this Mary, I think that's fantastic. That's that's really great advice, right? So, um, you know, getting in front of the market. You had a great example of that with short sales back in the day. And I think one of the things that we've talked a lot about on this show and some of the technology, frankly, as a company we're trying to build is is to get ahead of the market, right? To think about what the world is going to look like. Your second message is iron sharpens iron, right? And uh, your third message is is frankly getting the message right, right? I love when you say that we're all in the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat, right? And and I know that all of us on this call right now feel, I think, a great deal of gratitude. We feel very fortunate, right, for the position that we're in right now. And not everyone's in that same place. And so I think those are some really great messages. Musal, is there anything that you wanted to, to add or clarify along those lines? Yeah, I mean, Randy and Mary, I thought that, you know, the economy's returning to normal. I thought that business was going to go back to how it always was. Am I, am I off kilter there by thinking that there's going to be a return to normal? Can you give me some perspective there? I, I'm, you know, I just you might a, be with all. <laughs> I'm an agent in my home in the middle of Tennessee, and I see that everything's open again. And I think that the market's going to return to how it used to be. Is that not accurate? <laughs> well, from where I sit, I think we're definitely moving into real estate 2.0. I was on the Zillow earnings call recently, and you know, when you've got the largest consumer-facing brand in real estate saying that the market is going to shift and this is going to be real estate 2.0, you better be head up figuring out what that is. And that disruption is happening, um, I think, in the process, how we operate as real estate agents, how we you know, do listing consultations, how we do buyer consul consultations. Um, the process on the back end, you know, we're, we've got a, a virtual open house scheduled for this Saturday. Um, it, it, you know, we're just going to operate very differently and people need to be taking a very, uh, almost doing a forensic professional financial audit of their business and how they operate. Because when your consumer says, I, I, just last Friday, I did uh, three listing presentations back to back in 90 minutes. And Amazing. We, we were on the Zoom call and the seller says, well, do you just want to jump on FaceTime and I'll walk you through the house and show you our upgrades? Absolutely. Hmm. I would love to. So the consumer, I think a lot of times in real estate, we have limiting beliefs that, oh, the consumer will never do that. The consumer will never want that. You know, when Zillow started coming around, real estate agents were like, that'll never happen. That's oh, a okay. great point, Mary. Uh, right? Um, so I think we have limiting beliefs around what will the consumer actually do? So if you're not listening, right, we need to listen more than we talk in real estate right now. Mary, um, can I just interject a, a great example of I think recently um, there was data out just a couple days ago from a NAR survey and so in 2019 a, only about three and a half percent of homes were purchased um, without being seen by the buyer right and I think this is one of those things where you're like people will never buy a house without setting foot inside and their survey from a couple days ago um, of the agents that they surveyed almost a third of them had at least one uh, house home in contract for a home that the buyer had never seen before. It, it almost seems crazy, but it's happening and it's accelerating, right? Yeah, if you talk to any agent that's that's ever worked with the military, like how many times do Good our point. military clients buy homes off of video, sight unseen, take a rental, sight unseen off of video? Any agent that works in a second home market like Florida, Arizona, Palm Springs, Aspen. Um, you know, these people are buying and selling property over the phone, now over Zoom and yeah. DocuSign. And, you know, if you don't have all of your pre-listing packages ready to go in a Dropbox 
and ready to send so that when you get on that Zoom call, you're down to business. Uh, it's amazing the time and the efficiency and effectiveness that technology now is bringing into real estate through it, through COVID. Um, yes. And, and I mean, aren't going to go back. It's the opportunity that COVID has presented us with, right? And that's how we on this call are choosing to view this is an opportunity. And I don't think it's optional. I think that maybe a month ago we thought, okay, maybe this flight to virtual is just a temporary thing because we have to, because we're all stuck at home right now. But from every strategic leader and conversation and every piece of data we're seeing, this is now the new way, right? And so I don't believe for the agents necessarily on this call that everyone's really there mentally, Mary. And I know that you are, which is why yes. we're very fond of your message. Can you please give a, just a, a clear message to the agents about your perspective on how this particular thing of doing things virtual is no longer an option, right? It is now the consumer's choice, back to your point, right? Yeah, so, so what COVID made us do out of necessity, the consumer is now going to want out of convenience. Absolutely. Very it, well it said. 100% That's agree. A quote. It goes back to bagged lettuce. <laughs> you know who's gonna pay three dollars for a bag of lettuce when you can buy a head of lettuce for 49 cents 79 cents right we all buy the three dollar bagged lettuce because it saves us time it's convenient right mm -hmm. consumers are going to demand more out of real estate when it comes to convenience now covid made it a necessity but they are going to make it a convenience for them in their lives and the same is for you, Mary. You did those three uh, virtual open houses back to back in 90 minutes and won all three new listings. That would have taken you three days in a former in a former life, right? So the convenience factor is first and foremost for the customer because in real estate, of course, we care most about what consumers need of us to serve mm -hmm. them, right? But then secondarily, look how much service that that gave to you and your operational overhead your efficiency what else could you do with that time you know and heck you know i saw your living room the other day you got a full wine bar and, the, and you got your pajamas on <laughs> there's plenty of things i know you would do with that time that you've gotten back and i'm sure most of it is about giving back to others because that is another big hobby of yours but what amazing you know elevation that this entire covid 19 crisis yes. has actually put us in the opportunity to become, we're elevating our game. And I just want all of our agents out there who are listening and using Mary as an example of what, where maybe they are right now or where they'd like to be at some point to realize that Mary has taken extreme ownership over her own personal feelings about this matter. She's seen the scope of the land. She's seen the lay of the land with her own knowledge about her past experiences she's relying on to actually get in the right mentality about how to lead herself, her family, and her brokerage through this. She sees a new way is coming out of this, and she's moving on to action now. She's not waiting for everyone else to figure it out. She's just deciding to go virtual. She's deciding to just pioneer it, to figure it out, to strip different bits of technology together, to see what works, to break some things. She's not afraid of failing many times before she gets it right. And in the wake of doing all that, you're an incredible example to all of us, Mary. So I just want to thank you so much, first of all, for your service um, in the military, right? And, and beyond to your family as a military spouse and to the nation. And yes. now in the form of real estate and all these military families and other civilian families that you and your brokerage have served, um, you are the epitome of the type of real estate agent List Reports absolutely is here to serve and support as a business, right? So we just want to thank you holistically for being who you are um, and being a beacon of well, and just sort of fast forward thinking about what's going to happen. You're like the 2025 agent in my mind, right? But you're right now. Um, and I, I just am so proud. <laughs> we, have a, we have a question, Mary, before we let you go, I want we have a question from the audience. Uh, I'm going to pull it up on screen right now. It says, you spoke about consumer need state. I think this was in the context of getting the message right. How might you determine where a consumer is if you don't know them well? Is it a matter of knowing your SOI well or creating content with the hope it resonates and opens the conversation? That's a great question because at the end of the day, words matter. And so when you are putting messaging out there, whether it be to your database or to your farm, your geographic, categorical, demographical farm, whatever it is that is the focus of your business, words matter. And more so than ever, we have to get away from things like, what is your home worth? We need to transition into equity. Equity gives people choice when they are a seller. And right now, people need choice. If they are a 
you know, non-owner occupied, they have investments, they have portfolios, they need choice because possibly what's happening in their personal life, they need the equity from those investment properties to make that transition and that shift. Or they are in situations that COVID has unfortunately put them into a place that maybe, you know, they and their spouse have decided to separate or they have to relocate. So the messaging and the words that we use are going to be very important. And bringing certainty in, in uncertain times is where we can serve through education and advocacy. And so having choice, number one, I think agents better sharpen their skills right now, take this time to decide how can you give sellers different choices when it comes to how are they going to handle their real estate, right? Yeah. Do they need speed, convenience, and certainty? Do they want the traditional way of selling? Or do they need maximum equity to be able to go do what they need to do? Yep. You have to be an agent that brings choice because knowing their options is going to be the most important thing. Um, and it, you know, just meeting them where they are, but the shift has to be using words that resonate with them where they are right now. Absolutely. Very, very well said, Mary. And Mary, that's actually a nice tee up to something you haven't committed to yet, but I think you just did, which is we're going to come back on uh, in a couple of weeks and we're going to talk about this idea that as an agent, you are not the hero, right? Your buyer or seller is the hero and you are a guide in their journey. You are instrumental in their transformation from somebody who doesn't know how to do to buy or to sell to somebody who accomplishes it and is transformed as a result of that. So that actually was an inadvertent great segue and plug for a future show, Mary, that I hope you will come back on and talk to me about because that's a topic I'm very passionate about. I would love it. I know that you guys have a lot of amazing things happening at List Reports that is going to help agents elevate their game because let me tell you, you better be training because right now it's about to be game on. It is yes. going to be chaos. When we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Sellers and buyers are confused. They don't really know what's happening out there. And so agents have got to be prepared to elevate their game. And I know that you guys are working on some amazing stuff. So I would love to come back. Well said. Mary, thank you for your advice, your wisdom, your service. Um, this was tremendous. And why don't you say a fond temporary farewell to our agentpreneurs? Absolutely. Thank you all so much. It was a privilege to serve our country and go out there and make a difference. Thank you. Thank so you, much. Mary. All right. Well, Wasal, that was pretty cool. Lots of really great information there. Some three, three really good action items. Iron sharpen iron. Get out in front of the minutes. market. Get the message right. <sighs> You that know, blew by, it, Randy. It did blow 40 by. minutes that was a long in. Show. I can't even believe it. We have to have her on immediately again. It's fantastic. We so definitely me, will. She, she and her agents, they lead with value, Randy. And that's what she's talking about, differentiating herself. That's right. You know, it's it's leading with value, serving others. And the way that that's taking place is the example I think every agent can learn from. One final note there, Randy, to wrap up Please. for all of our agents listening about just my perspective as a bystander of watching Mary and her brokerage's success over the years. When you look back at what she's done, I will tell you that, and I've seen this thousands of times across the nation with agents who just shoot up in their market, especially during times like this, like in 2008, when certain agents just took hold of their local market and have never let go of that grip. And you know who they are, right? A lot mm -hmm. of you listening are those agents. What they've done is they found their own authentic voice and they highlighted it. And then they made that their differentiated value. You know, not everyone is a client that an agent should work with. You have to know when not to work with certain people, right? And at this time, if you're going forward and you're becoming a modern agent and you're really attacking the next wave of how real estate should be and you want to be a leader, you might have to abandon some of the old things you used to make concessions for, the certain clients you might work with that drag you down or that don't share, you know, core beliefs. You as an agent have to have an authentic voice and it will magnetize the right clientele towards you. You have to be fearless about doing that and, and be confident in knowing that if you are being your authentic self, the right people will come to you. And I believe that's what Mary's done. She has such Absolutely. an authentic voice and she leads with value that it has attracted all this great uh, energy 
goodwill and massive clientele to her. And I think that's something we could all learn from on this call. Uh, 100%. And look, we've had guest after guest on with Saul who's uh, built an amazing business during some kind of an economic crisis or otherwise. Yes. And who's doubled down and built their brand by focusing on something. Remember Mark Choi when he came on, right? He became the number right. two condo salesperson in San Francisco by amazing. literally moving into the building he wanted to sell in and only selling properties in that building, right? To build up right. his brand. He was referring deals literally across the street, right? So that level of deep focus and being known for something is everything. So with that, yes. Lasalle, why don't we wrap for today? Um, why don't you just talk briefly about tomorrow? And then as a reminder to everybody, Friday, our show's at 9 a.m., not 11 a.m. We have Jocko Willink and that's Andrew right. Paul, who served with Jocko on, uh, and Andrew's a top loan officer, and that's going to be a tremendous show. Tomorrow is an amazing opportunity to learn about seven different nonprofit organizations that support the military, ways that you and your clients can get involved in supporting them. The content, again, everybody get ready for this. Share it with your clients. Share it on social media. Bring our content that we're bringing to you to your sphere and leverage it for your own personal yes. gain right now. Um, when we're talking about helping others, there's no such thing as selfish. So be very selfish. Use it for your own branding. This is the right type of content to perpetuate out there. And don't forget about our awesome book contest, our giveaway for Jocko signed copies of these books that Randy, we're already having a lot of traction in this contest. I have mine from a couple of years ago. My buddy, Matt Emery swindled for me from Jocko and I keep it on my desk and I read this thing all the time. So I can't wait for everyone else. Please enter to get your copy on our contest. And don't forget that Jocko's here at 9 a.m. Pacific on Friday. That's right. All right, everybody. Until tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Say goodbye. See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow.